Hey everybody, what is up? Tim here, back again for Droid Life. We are back with the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Of course, we're going to keep that coverage rolling. I've already done the unboxing. Kellen's done the first 10 things to do with the Galaxy S21. And before we do our full review, which should be here pretty darn soon, we've got to do tips and tricks. I mean, there's so much stuff that Samsung bakes into uh, One UI 3.1 on this device and of course there's the newness with Android uh, 11 itself So there's a lot to go over a whole bunch of stuff grab some popcorn get comfortable. We're gonna be here a while Let's get right into it Galaxy S21 Ultra tips and tricks So first thing is first let's go over one of the things that kind of came with Android 11 and it's a bit more easily accessible, say, on a Pixel device, but at least it is built in here. And I'm talking about Google device controls. Typically on a Pixel device, you would just long press on the power button. However, Samsung uh, does not allow for that. And instead, we have to do a, a little bit of tweakery, which is totally fine. Uh, what you're going to need is to have the devices and medias buttons up here in your notification shade. That needs to be enabled. And if it's not like that out of the box, uh, you're simply going to pull all the way down, hit on the three dots right here in the top right, and then hit quick panel layout. And right here, you're going to see options for show devices and media buttons. It may come out of the, uh, come out of the box disabled. You're just going to simply enable it. And once that's done, you're going to see these two buttons. And when we hit on devices, uh, out of the box or say like when you first enable this it's going to be on smart things so you're going to see smart things devices such as galaxy buds that you may have or if it's your device has been paired to a car's bluetooth system um, right now i want to be able to access my google home control say my my nest thermostat or my nest lock um, so i'm going to simply hit on home and when you have the google home app installed and you're logged into your account these things are uh, automatically going to populate right here. So when I've got smart lights and locks and all that stuff, all of these controls are going to pop up right here. So for example, I can just quickly tap on my Nest thermostat and I can change up my heat. I can see if my front door is locked or unlocked. So these are all very handy little things that were baked into Android 11. Samsung kind of hides it, but but that's okay. As long as we can access it um, quickly by just boom, devices and I'm in there, that's not that bad. Um, also something that Samsung does that we sort of have to change, at least when you're a Pixel user like me, right? I'm pretty dedicated to the Pixel experience from Google. Uh, but I, you know, I'm, I'm digging this One UI. It's gotten so much better over the years. So what I like to do is I like to set my default applications mostly to Google Apps. Um, you don't necessarily have to do this, of course, but say if you're coming from a Pixel, uh, you may just be used to sort of using those Google Apps. So in order to do that, all we have to do is scroll down in your settings menu, hit Apps, and then it's the first option here, choose Default Apps. Now. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I prefer Chrome over Samsung Internet App. I use the uh, Samsung Internet App for a while. It's not a bad experience. I just have everything built into Chrome already, like all of my Google account stuff. So I simply just set Chrome as my default there. And then also, um, there's a whole bunch of other things you can set for the default, like call redirecting app or your digital assistant app, home app, etc. All of that stuff is done right here from the default apps list. Uh, another one just real quick with the device assistant app um, so from here is where you can change it say if you want Bixby voice or Google assistant and then from here whenever you have one of those selected this gear button is going to dive into the settings for that particular service so if I dive in there boom I'm in my Google, I'm not my Google voice but my Google assistant sort of settings menu and the same thing would be done for Bixby and then you have a uh, different uh, settings down here for controlling that assistant and um, also you've got defaults for phone app SMS app and also opening links and this is also a big one say if you are um, I've had times where I've set Chrome as my default app but the applications on the phone open links say in Samsung internet and for me that's no bueno so opening links um, being able to say if I'm inside hangouts and Kellen sends me a link to something. I, I don't want it opening in Samsung Internet. So being able to set all those uh, apps that can open links and then apps that uh, which apps um, open certain links is important to control. So just know that all of that is set right from the default apps list in your settings menu. It's good to know. 
Um, also, which I kind of wish they incorporated this, but I understand why they don't, is the autofill from Google. So if we go down just one more setting to general management and scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see right here in the middle, autofill service. Very important function, especially when setting up a new device. And out of the box, it's going to be autofill with Samsung Pass. Now, if you've been using Samsung devices for a while, you probably have, say, a lot of your passwords already stored in your Samsung account. However, I don't. Uh, so I set Google. And then, of course, you can access your settings for your autofill with Google account, which includes addresses, credit cards, payment methods, passwords, autofill, biometric security stuff. Um, so that's good to know. Uh, out of the box, it is going to be Samsung uh, Pass by, what is it? Autofill with Samsung Pass. And... Uh, I'm not the hugest fan, so I autofill everything that way when I'm setting up a new device. Um, I have all of those, uh, all of my login credentials ready and waiting for me when I open up the app for the first time. Uh, so autofill, definitely make sure you set that, set that to Google if you already have all your usernames and passwords saved inside of your Google account. Next up, want to talk about another Android 11 feature uh, that Samsung didn't necessarily hide, but you do have to sort of enable it and tweak it to get it working right. And I'm talking about bubbles uh, for notifications. And we're talking about bubbles for messaging apps such as Google Messages, Facebook Messenger, etc. A little tweaking you got to do. So in order to do, uh, in order to get that all set up from the settings menu, notifications, and then right here, advanced settings and floating notifications. Now, Samsung had their own thing called Smart Pop-Up View, that's nothing new, uh, but Bubbles is something you definitely want enabled if you want that bubble experience. So when a messaging app, um, say, has a notification come in, it's going to pop up and do its own little floating bubble. And I haven't heard anyone complaining about Bubbles, uh, so I guess that's a good thing. Um, also, what you can do is, let's say, there's a certain uh, notification that comes in from a messaging app and you want to, want to just ensure that bubbles are going to pop up. So say I've got messages here. Um, we can have right here down on the bottom between show, uh, notif no between show notifications and uh, the other show notifications one. It's kind of weird that they double up on that. But there's show bubbles and we can choose all or selected only. Uh, and then inside of that app, you can actually choose which conversations you want to have pop up as a bubble. Uh, a lot of people use Facebook Messenger, so just ensure that bubbles are enabled for Facebook Messenger, and then you can enable them and disable them per conversation, I'm pretty sure, inside of the Facebook Messenger app. So not every uh, text app, of course, uh, supports bubbles. Um, if, you're at, you know, if your app of choice doesn't, maybe talk to the developer, and you can get them on the bubble train. Um, also under uh, notifications here I uh, wanted to go under advanced settings and then we want to talk about wireless emergency alerts um, I know crazy tip and trick but a lot of times it's kind of hard, hard to find these wireless emergency alerts and these are like your amber alerts if there's a tornado alert or any type of alert this is where you're going to enable and disable those alerts I know some people don't like those alerts so you can actually choose to just disable all of those alerts uh but i you know I, I like to allow them just in case you never know you might be able to uh, help somebody out uh, if there's an amber alert so uh good to have the wireless emergency alerts on but you can disable them if you choose to of course as a lot of people know the galaxy s21 ultra has a all the specs all the ram all the power and what good is all that power if you're not taking full advantage of it? Am I right? So let's talk about, say, a performance mode. And now under, if we scroll down a bit in the settings menu and go to battery and device care and tap on battery, um, we have a power saving mode right here. And we also have more battery settings. Now you've got a new enhanced processing uh, settings menu. And it just says get faster data processing for all apps except games uses more battery and uh, we're talking about data processing uh, with regard to say data transfers uh, things such as that um, so if you're you know transferring a lot of data and of course these phones you know with all their radios and all their fancy uh, fast storage uh, you're going to be able to sort of uh, process the data that's being transported from one thing to another more quickly um, also, the power saving mode, uh, that's all customizable. 
uh, you know, if you can, you can actually limit the CPU speed to say 70%, uh, decrease the brightness. The, there's a whole bunch of sort of little things you can do to ensure you're getting the most out of your 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Um, it's also going to tell you, say, how long your phone is going to last if it's enabled. Um, things like that are always nice uh, to know. And then, of course, you can background usage limits. Uh, sleeping apps, deep sleeping apps, all that is tweakable if there's certain apps that are going to sleep when they aren't supposed to and the system just isn't catching it properly you can um, add apps that will not ever sleep and you can also disable uh, the phone from putting unused apps to sleep itself so uh, real quick just uh, wanted to give you just sort of an overview of your battery settings menu here it's actually pretty nice uh, in terms of the overall kind of overview I should say of the uh, battery usage on your device so up here at the top you're getting your sort of how much battery life is left on the device you're getting a usage chart here you can swipe through that and see what your average daily usage is um, over the last seven days you can see I'm pretty pretty uh, good over there 50 percent and then also we've got more battery settings all the way down here um, talked about that but also you can enable and disable super fast charging fast wireless charging fast charging all of that you can disable and enable your battery percentage here show charging information there's like so many different settings it's kind of ridiculous uh, but then wireless power sharing um, that is the ability to say charge uh, your galaxy buds pro or galaxy buds plus on the actual device itself say if you got it face down you want to charge your thing uh, that's where you can enable that that of course is also um, can be enabled right from the pull down in your system toggles right here and this is all customizable you know this has been customizable for years i don't know if i need to really go over that not much of a tip and trick i think everyone knows how to customize all that good stuff so so that's it for the battery you know taking advantage of all your all your power you don't want things going to sleep you want your games to perform well that's all going to be right inside of there um let's talk about sound uh two stereo speakers on the galaxy s21 ultra that sound really good so in terms of sound quality and effects you just simply go to the settings menu sound and vibration and if we scroll down a bit uh, we've got sound quality and effects and right here I've got Dolby Atmos already enabled out of the box I believe it's disabled so I go ahead I enable that and I have it on auto so the phone I guess you know or the software recognizes what it is you're doing watching a movie listening to music or listening to voice say maybe like a podcast or something um i just have mine set to automatically and it says experience breakthrough audio for media playback that flows above and around you i mean you know it's okay i i would say like bass is a bit thicker maybe highs are a bit clearer i don't know i mean there it's i wouldn't say it's a placebo it's definitely noticeable when you have it disabled uh, to enabled um, but you know, I'm not gonna, it's, I, and I wouldn't just say it's a marketing thing. Like it, it sounds okay. More realistically or something at least more tangible for my ears is the equalizer. And you can access the equalizer with that most disabled or enabled totally up to you. Uh, but for the equalizer, it appears to be a 10 band equalizer. And you've got, uh, different settings here, presets, pop, classic, jazz, rock, and custom. You can sort of change each band however you want it. I go rock, of course, uh, you know, just because I like my my heavy lows and my crashing highs. That's just how I prefer it. But um, classic is also pretty similar to rock um, in terms of overall EQ. So up to you, but that is where you access that stuff. And it is kind of hidden under sound quality and effects. And, of course, you've got a dedicated setting for Dolby Atmos for gaming. And then you can also uh, choose to adapt sound. And this is going to sort of tweak it. It's going to do a quick uh, test for your ears. And you're going to, the phone will set it up uh, for your ears and kind of tune the audio experience specifically for your ears. Uh, let's go to the home screen and let's talk home screen customization. Of course, this is Android. We like to customize our home screen here. And what's really nice is it's very easy to do on these devices. Simply give it a pinch. And first thing I want to talk about is Google Discover. Kellen may have covered this in his first 10 things to do, but I'll cover it again real quick. You've got two options. Google Discover, which is similar to what comes on a Pixel device, uh, or is what comes on a Pixel device. And then you've got Samsung Free, which is sort of Samsung's version. It's not Bigsby Home or anything like that. It's a lot better, thank goodness. Uh, but I've just got it set up to Google Discover. 
uh, but there's a lot more options of course you've got settings for wallpapers themes widgets and settings so if you go into the settings here you can actually really deep dive into the customization options you've got your home screen layout basic uh, which is like a home and app screen or home screen only which means no app drawer uh, you can choose the grid itself uh, make it bigger larger smaller all that good stuff uh, app screen grid so if you want all the apps on one page you can four by four it plenty of options there um, you can show app screen button on the home screen so like back in the day with Android you had an actual button dedicated to the app drawer now we just swipe up and down so I have that disabled you can lock the layout you can add new apps to the home screen so when you download uh, an app from Google Play for the first time it's going to automatically add that to the home screen you can hide apps if you want to hide apps from the app drawer you can uh, hide individual apps and so they won't show up in that uh, app drawer that you have you can enable or disable app icon badges swipe down for the notification panel which is really nice just being able to swipe down on your home screen to uh, show all of your notifications or whatever and then of course you can swipe up for the app drawer swipe up swipe up and get out of it so there's plenty of uh, things to choose from then also of course themes who doesn't love a good theme so being able to switch up your home screen very android we have to talk about it uh let's move on to the next next i want to talk about secure folder and this is an interesting feature that sort of a allows users um just to protect any sensitive data or photos that they may have and in order to enable that for the first time you're going to go into your settings menu here um scroll down until you hit uh, biometrics and security right here right underneath the lock screen so scrolling down a little bit further we've got secure folder and it's going to sort of walk you through the process of setting it up the first time and then you can use biometrics there's a few uh, lock types you can choose from um, so I have just a pattern with my fingerprints enabled and that's going to protect my secure folder and so here's the settings uh, for secure folders it's got sort of an automatic lock notifications and data everything that runs through secure folder is secured by Samsung Knox which is their kind of privacy and security uh, software and I will say when you set it up for the first time you'll notice that your phone gets very hot uh, whatever it's doing is processing a lot of stuff through uh, security and apparently that means your phone has to get really hot so that's a secure folder so once it's set up it's going to actually be inside of your app drawer and this won't be here to begin with uh, but when you get in there and then I've, I've already got it unlocked so um, you're going to have these applications so a gallery app calendar app contacts uh, internet anything that you may want to have secured um, especially files and say your gallery you know I don't know why you'd want any of that stuff locked it's not my business anyway so inside of the gallery app you can actually move um, certain uh, pictures uh, videos anything that you want from your regular gallery to your uh, secured gallery and in order to begin that process uh, you can go to add files and then you're going to choose what type of files documents files audio videos let's say I want images and right now I've got this is my just my standard gallery application this is what's inside of it so say I've got a picture of my beautiful dog Loki and I want to add that to my secure folder um, I can copy it and so it'll keep a unsecured uh, copy of it in the gallery app or I can literally move uh, the entire file to the secure folder now when I open up the secure folder boom I've got my my picture there and it's been moved from the gallery application uh, just the standard one thankfully I've got a few more um, so that's secure folder so you can do that for audio video um, a lot of people like just being able to keep certain apps on lockdown and with secure folder that's the way you can do it uh, moving on we got to talk about this display gorgeous 6.8 inch quad HD display at 120 Hertz this display is super sweet but with super sweet displays come a whole ton of settings so of course first things first dark mode versus light mode um, I, as you can see I've got mine set to dark mode and you can schedule this thank goodness so you can turn it on as scheduled during the day it's going to be sunset to sunrise or you can set it on a custom schedule um, so being able just to choose between that and having it on a schedule 
absolutely fantastic. Motion smoothness is where you're going to find that 120 hertz. Unfortunately, there's either adaptive or standard. Uh, standard's going to cap it at 60 hertz, or adaptive all the way up to 120 hertz, down to 10 hertz, I believe. So it, it's like a huge sort of uh, range of refresh rate uh, your screen could be at. Uh, so I choose adaptive. Uh, keep scrolling down here. You've got eye comfort shield, which is sort of that blue light filter. Um, that can be adaptive. It can be custom. You can set the color temperature manually. You can set that on the schedule, which I have. Um, obviously something you're going to want to do at nighttime. I like to have it turn on automatically. That way my eyes can adjust and if it feels good. It feels better to look at. So something to think about. Screen mode. I just set mine to vivid. Uh, there's natural. You can sort of uh, change the uh, advanced um, the white balance for the RGB values individually, uh, but I just set it to vivid. I don't really think about it all too much. It looks fine. Um, scrolling down a bit more, screen resolution. So I've got mine set to Full HD+. Plus. You can now on the Galaxy S21 Ultra have it set to Quad HD+, plus and the 120 Hz. So all the pixels refreshing super quickly. It's great, but it is going to take its toll on your battery life, so keep that in mind. You do, do have the edge panels still. Um, if you can enable that and then you're going to have your little edge panel here for your applications or whatever else you may want um, You can add panels remove panels people. It's all the same stuff That's been in these Samsung phones for quite some time ever since the what was it the Galaxy S6 Edge? I believe it was well now there was that other one there was I forget what the phone was called It doesn't matter, but it had the curves just the one curved screen on the edge shout out to that phone um, So edge panels are there you can enable disable do whatever under navigation bar this is where you're going to see your gestures. And of course for Android 10 and up, we've got gestures from Google. So I've got my swipe gestures. You can still have your buttons, of course, and that's going to enable that sort of multi uh, multitasking, home button, all that. So, but I like to have the swipe gestures. And then there are options for that. You can have Samsung's gestures or Google's gestures. Uh, the swipe from the bottom gestures for Samsung are going to be uh, dependent on how you have your setup for uh, not physical but sort of the on-screen buttons so keep that in mind those can change uh, but I like having the swipe from side and button like I like being able to swipe from the side for back and all that and you can change your sensitivity so whole lot of good stuff in there um, but then also what's interesting is I love this little looking for something else this is one of the greatest things so from the notification bar um, settings menu you have Samsung pay quick access and that quick access we're talking about is that little screen down here which allows you to quickly drag up your say your uh, Samsung pay credit card or debit card whatever so if you go Samsung pay quick access uh, you dive into the settings menu for Samsung pay and this is great so super pro tip here so I and I disable the screen off access to it but I keep it enabled on the home screen and lock screen why you may ask it's because sometimes when I pull the phone out of my pocket Samsung pay is trying to somehow either the way I'm holding the phone or I'm pulling it out of my pocket maybe it rubs up on the bottom and then brings up Samsung pay it's got to be one of the most annoying things and that's solved uh, as long as you disable it on the screen off that way when you pull it out of the pocket or your purse or wherever it's not going to accidentally uh, try and toss up Samsung pay so keep that in mind disable it on screen off and of course that's successful if you just go straight into the Samsung pay app itself and dive into your settings menu next up I want to talk about the lock screen and all the different things you can do on there because it's a it's a long list um, so in your settings menu dive in the lock screen real quick you're gonna see a whole bunch of stuff but there's just a few things I want to go over you know how to set up a fingerprint and a pattern I don't need to go over all that but I do want to talk about smart lock it's something we recommend that everyone uses because if you're at home there's no reason you need to keep using you know your your phone lock so I just go ahead you go into trusted places and you set your address as a trusted place and whenever your phone is within that sort of geofence then it's going to just keep your device unlocked and you can do the same thing for on body detection and trusted devices say when your favorite pair of Bluetooth earbuds are connected to the device your phone is going to stay unlocked smart lock it's been inside of Android for years and years we love it so just keep using it um, I want to talk about notifications out of the box I'm pretty sure notifications on the lock screen are either well they're enabled but they don't look very good so right here you've got notifications for the lock screen you go into there and now 
I believe out of the box it might just be icons only so what we do is I hit details Oh, I remember when Kellen and I first discovered this it was, it was like man creating fire for the first time it was awesome so you hit details and then you can also you can tra change the transparency of the notifications themselves uh, you can hide content uh, but having the details is important right because if I'm on the lock screen I simply swipe down on notification I want to be able to see what's inside said notification so details um, is always great and then of course all the way at the bottom show on always on display that's important because you don't want, uh, you know, you want to be able to access all of that stuff um, no matter if you've got the always on display on or off. Um, moving on, inside of the lock screen, we've got the always on display, as we were just talking about more to, uh, towards the top here. So, always on display, you can enable, disable. Um, you can, there's a few settings for it. You can have it show on as scheduled, so you can set times for it. You can show always, which is what I do, and then tap to show for 10 seconds. So your screen is off, you tap it, and boom, uh, you're going to be able to see your always on, dis on display. You can change the actual clock style. There's clocks, there's different little, like there's a kitty cat, there's a bicycle, there's different things you can choose. You can choose to show music information. Um, and then you can also, uh, if you go down here all the way on the bottom, you can go at your show fingerprint icon and that's going to be able to, uh, that it's going to pop up for you real nicely. Show icon when screen is off on always on display and you can choose when you want the actual fingerprint icon to show. Um, not that it necessarily matters, but it's at least good to know that it's there. And lastly in lock screen, shortcuts. So when you're on the lock screen, on the bottom here, you're going to see that I got shortcuts for the camera and shortcuts for phone. I mean, you can just sort of dive into those things. Um, and being able to customize that is nice. So if you just tap on it, you can actually choose whatever app you want. Um, one for the left and one for the right. Um, there is a certain applications, the ones down here, that require you to unlock the device to open that application. So you can't just be have the phone locked and dive straight into an app. That wouldn't be very secure. Uh, but there are certain things like the flashlight, which is great, right? Like I hardly ever use um, the phone functionality, but I do use the camera. Uh, but since I have the two button press on the power button, I don't necessarily need that either. So for the left, I can go flashlight and for the right, uh, I can just, I, I keep the camera just in case, but you can obviously have the calculator, do not disturb, whatever you want to do. Uh, very nice little feature being able to customize those lock screen shortcuts. Next up, I want to talk about advanced features. On these phones, of course, tons of advanced features. So say you dive into your settings menu here, scroll down a bit, you'll see advanced features. And there's just a few things I want to talk about, though you could probably spend all day going through all of this stuff. First things first, side key. So right here uh, is, this is your side key, AKA volume buttoned. Uh, and out of the box, the double press, I believe, will quick launch the camera, but when you press and hold, it wakes Bixby. Now, I don't use Bixby, so I change that immediately to the power off menu. That way, when I long press it, I get this menu. This settings menu itself is also, you can access it from uh, long pressing, whether it's the Bixby or not. You can just hit side key settings. So a double tap of it launches the camera. So double tap, boom, camera. And then if you, um, you can also change that uh, to open up any app you may want. So say you want to open up Amazon or Drive or whatever, uh, you can set that. So do know that side key, all those settings are right there. Um, if you scroll down just ever so slightly, you'll see motions and gestures. So a few cool things here, lift to wake. So for example, let's say uh, you have that enabled and then you set your phone down, oh, you hear vibrate, or not even just vibrate, but you just want to quickly glance. And then when you pick it up, the display will turn on. Um, I typically have that turned off. Don't know why, maybe I just don't really use it all too much. But there's other things, uh, other sweet gestures. For example, double tap to turn on screen and double tap to turn off screen. I have both of those enabled. So if you're just on the screen, you can give it a double tap, it turns off, double tap to wake it. This is a throwback basically to LG. They started doing this years ago and it's been incorporated into Samsung devices and other Android devices uh, as well. You've got other options, keep screen on while viewing, 
uh, the camera will detect if your face is looking at the actual screen so it won't turn off if you're reading a book or whatever. Uh, mute with gestures, alert when phone picked up, palm swipe to capture, which is that um, palm there, so instead of seeing it, take a screenshot. Uh, but when you have the gestures for the back button, it's sometimes hard to kind of get that uh, that gesture to work properly to take a screenshot. Uh, but motions and gestures, all of that is in there. Another great one is one-handed mode. And so if you just go down just a little further here, one-handed mode, you can enable and disable. Oops. You can enable and disable. I like to have it enabled, and what I do is I just use the gesture. And this obviously is a large phone. If you're out walking around, say I got my dogs trying to hold them, and I can't quite get over here to say text properly, I can literally just swipe down. And so using the gesture, uh, let's see. If you're, say, on your home screen or doing whatever, you just swipe down uh, towards the bottom portion on the chin of the device, and it's going to uh, make everything smaller. And the phone is totally usable, just as it normally is. Everything's the same. It's just smaller. And if you want to get out of there, boom, you just tap on that, tap on, tap on the side. Uh, you can also switch sides if you're left-handed. You just hit that, and now, uh, you know, vice versa. Easy peasy. Uh... I like one-handed gesture, but again, uh, because gestures are already enabled on the device, sometimes you'll feel um, a bit of a, let's say, sort of like a double action going on, um, whether it be to uh, undo your uh, the bring down your notification shade, or maybe you're swiping up trying to get into your recent apps, but you bring up Samsung Pay. Like sometimes the gestures can sort of overlay, I would say, or kind of like be on top of each other. You just have to be mindful of that. And sometimes I've accidentally enabled one-handed mode um, without trying to. Uh, for example, let's say you're in YouTube and you're just trying to swipe out of a video. Uh, sometimes one-handed mode will enable itself, which can be a little frustrating. Uh, back into advanced features, let's talk about S Pen. As you can see, I've got the S Pen from the Galaxy Note 10 Plus in hand, this nice blue. And that's because the Galaxy S21 Ultra, even though it does support the S Pen and a few of its you know, features and capabilities, it does not ship one. It is a separate purchase. It costs you $40, and that S Pen is specific to the Galaxy S21 Ultra. It doesn't work on any other Galaxy devices, according to Samsung's website. So... If you have an S Pen from an older Note device, or say like an, uh, I think one of those Galaxy tablets, that should work just fine. Except if you buy the S Pen separately, it will only work on the 21 Ultra and not those past devices. It's kind of complex, it's kind of confusing, I'm so sorry. Um, and what's also interesting is that the $40 one doesn't have the Bluetooth capabilities. So say let's buy that, you aren't getting air actions, you aren't getting the remote features that you can say like on those newer Galaxy Note devices. So it's really sort of a limited experience. If you wanna do notes on your device or maybe do S or pen up and all that stuff, like you can do that. But just know that it is a somewhat of a limited experience and I'll kinda of go over what you can do. Um, thankfully, Samsung did announce the S Pen Pro, which is coming out later this year. That will have the Bluetooth capabilities. It's quite a bit bigger <laughs> than a standard S Pen, so you probably will need like a separate case and all that. Um, you can buy a case for this device that has an S Pen, and those start around $70, $69.99, I believe, on Samsung's website. Comes with a case, comes with an S Pen, and you know, but since that the S Pen they're selling doesn't have a battery, there's no Bluetooth. So again, it's limited, but let's go over what you can do. Um, first things first, you, you can do the screen off note. So let's say your screen is off, you've got the S Pen, it's got a button here, you just hold that button, tap on the screen, and it's going to do these screen off menus, uh, memos, excuse me. And here in the top left corner, you can adjust the color, blue, white, yellow, red. You can adjust the thickness of the pen itself for drawing smiley faces eraser for erasing all the stuff you just did now let's say if I wanted to write a little message hi DL droid life and then you can actually pin that to your always on display nice little feature if you can kind of see that there so you can pin that um, you just hit pin it to always on display and you just hit back and then of course you can save your memos straight to Samsung notes so fantastic now, when you are unlocked, let's say you want to hold, just do like a Samsung Note, um, you can again hold that button, double tap on the screen, and the Note uh, cap functionality is going to pop up. 
and then you can start writing your notes. Of course, I'm not the person, a great person to show this stuff off because I have terrible, I got chicken scratch, I got my dad's handwriting. Uh, so not the prettiest thing, but of course here, you know, you can um, go down, make multiple pages, um, switch up your view, all that stuff. There's so many things like Samsung has been uh, pushing a ton of features in the Samsung Notes lately, and then we saw that especially last year with the Note 20 and the Note 20 Ultra. So a lot of good things to play with there. Um, much like, you know, say on the Note devices here, when you've got sort of your S Pen active and it's right here on that right side, you have this sort of air command view. And then also um, you can access that if the pen is close, clicking on the button and it'll bring up all your sort of shortcuts and all that stuff. Uh, shortcuts for creating notes, smart select, screen write, live messages, AR doodle, translate, pen up. And of course you can add shortcuts, take away shortcuts. You can customize that however you see fit. There's options for Bigsby Vision, Magnify, Glance, Coloring, and Write on the Calendar. And of course you can remove things and then add things as well. Come on, I can remove things and then add things back. So that's all customizable, very nice. And then you can also access that menu uh, from in here and uh, so add shortcuts, but then you can also access the actual S Pen settings menu uh, right from that sort of air command strip as well so we've gone over how to create notes and memos and all that stuff and kind of customizing that side so let me give you a rundown here real quick of the settings menu for the s pen um, you can enable and disable the creating notes and screen off memos but like that's the majority of the functionality since this thing doesn't have bluetooth so not exactly sure why you'd even buy the s pen like Obviously, if you don't have the S Pen, you can just switch all of it off. Um, but just to, it seems like such a limited sort of experience. Um, so there's the Air View, um, which is nice. So, for example, let's say we are in the Samsung Gallery application. Um, there's a few applications where this will work the Samsung Calendar app, Samsung Gallery app, Samsung apps in particular. And AirView, say we're inside of the gallery, we want to just kind of, without having to tap on things, you can literally just hover your S Pen over a photo, over a video, and it'll sort of autoplay those things you can share from here and all that. It's kind of just a nice way to quickly access things like that. Um, and then again, in the calendar, it's going to be the same thing. You can access all of that uh, just by simply hovering. Um, real quick, we'll dive back into the settings menu. And to from the actual settings menu of the phone, it's under advanced features and S Pen. If you scroll down just a little bit, boom, S Pen, you're going to get to all that. Um, you've got the shortcuts, which is, again, all of that. You can customize. Um, you've got your floating icon, which is sort of kind of hard to see on the screen, but there is sort of like a floating little dot whenever you're hovering close. Um, open air command with the S Pen button. Again, that's just simply the being close and then, boom, opening all of that. Um, if we scroll down a little bit further, there's sound. So when you're actually writing, it will kind of give you that scribble sound, that ch -ch 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 -ch. Not too bad, not too bad. But again, as you can see, I mean, that's... That's about it. You're not getting a ton. Um, there are f a couple of features, of course, I have to highlight with the S Pen. Some of the things I actually quite like about it. Um, one is under Smart Select, and that's creating a, a GIF or a GIF. Um, so let's say we're we're watching some Droid Life here, and those guys do something real funny, and we need to rewind and uh, watch that. So what you can do if that's playing, um, or even not playing, you can go to Smart Select, and then right down here on the bottom, there's a GIF button. And that's going to automatic, automatically center itself. Now this will work on any app. If there's anything you want to capture a GIF of, a video or anything, um, you, can sim you can move all that, that's all customizable. And then you're going to see a record button and a quality button. There's high quality, standard quality. So we like high quality and hit record. And that's going to, as it's showing you like how many seconds it's playing, you get up to 15 seconds. It's going to show you how much storage that's taking as well. So we'll hit stop. And now we have a GIF of Kellen doing the first 10 things for the Galaxy S21, which I'll link right here if you haven't seen yet. Uh, shout out to Kellen. He's loving his Galaxy S21. Um, and so from here, you can edit a few things. You can share. You can download it. Um, we can discard. We can save it. And then we can share it right from where the, the GIF was created. So I do... I do like being able to do that. That is, that's not a bad little thing because you know our society is all about the gifs right now. 
Um, also under Smart Select, Smart Select I really think is that and Screen Write are the most important features, at least in my opinion. Um, so let's say we've got, you know, some navigational data or something, something we want to share quickly in an email. Um, with Smart Select, we can literally draw a square or we can lasso it or a circle sort of template. That um, information within that Smart Selection can either be extracted or pinned to the screen for sharing to another application. For example, let's say we've got some text here, Wednesday, February 3rd. We can extract that text and literally see it being extracted right here and then share that uh, to something else or copy. Now, that's interesting, right? So if we, let's say there's a bunch of passwords or something inside of something, you can smart select, copy all of that and then you know paste it into whatever app you need to unlock or whatever. Um, so that is nice. But what I appreciate is being able to say, pin that to the screen. Now this is totally movable. And let's say I just want to email it. Um, right here in the, co the compose email section of Gmail here, if I get it to focus, um, you can simply drag that here. I'll get the keyboard out of the way. You can drag that here into the composition area. I swear you can do this, this usually works. There we go. <laughs> And then once it lights up blue, now it's attached as a, uh, or it is inside the email as an attachment. And then we can send it to wherever we want. So that's a nice, uh, another nice little function. And again, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things you can do with the S Pen, but again, I, I have to sort of knock on Samsung just ever so slightly for really limiting. Yes, they implement and implemented um, S Pen into the Galaxy S21 Ultra, but it's such a limited experience. It's almost like kind of going back in time before the S Pen really did all that much and lastly we need to talk about the camera or should i say cameras that are on the back side of the galaxy s21 ultra a ton of software is incorporated into this device for these cameras so the best thing we can do is open up the camera and sort of go over it for you guys there's so much stuff um scene optimizer so Scene Optimizer, I use it in the sense where it can automatically uh, scan documents. So when you hold up, say, like a bill or a piece of paper, um, I've had it automatically want to scan that and I'll be able to sh save that as a PDF and I can share it. There's just a lot of neat things you can do. Um, it's not too bad in terms of wanting to uh, optimize everything. Um, it's pretty good. Like, so for example, when you're outside, uh, we want to take a nice landscape shot. The phone is actually really good at recognizing what it is you're trying to shoot. Um, if it's a dog or if it's plants, it's pretty darn good. So I would just say keep it enabled, see if you like it. Um, I've had it help me out a few times. I used to not really care for that sort of thing. I just wanted to be in complete control of the camera and the software, but it's not too bad at all. So give it a shot. Um, shot suggestions, I just leave that off. It's basically a guide. Um, and it's trying to help you line up good shots. It's not very useful in my opinion. Um, if you go down here, this is a really cool f feature right here. Swipe sh shutter button for create GIF. Um, there is an option also to take a burst shot, but I don't need a burst shot. I like to create GIFs. So just to show how that works, let's say you've got a subject here, uh, something funny, your dog is doing something silly, you just want to make a GIF, you can share. So let's say we've got our uh, subject here and then we literally just kind of hold that and then you can see here we have buttons moving and we just made a gif but let me do another one with some movement that way you can kind of see that it works and then inside of our gallery app we've got a moving gif so that's as easy uh, as it is to create a gif um, and of course you can change that to the burst shot like I said but I appreciate the gif creation Format and advanced options, literally the format of the photos themselves, HEIF photos, raw copies, ultra wide shape correction, uh, shape correction. So there's um, settings in there for all that stuff. Selfie cone color, advanced recording options for HDR 10 plus videos, high efficiency, zoom in mic. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Video stabilization, the stabilization on this device is fantastic. Uh, I was practicing out uh, on some trails, some rocky trails, some muddy trails, and the stabilization was really good. I'll have that in my full review. Grid lines, it's a three by three, I believe. Uh, actually, we can just confirm. Yeah, it's three by three. Um, there's no, unfortunately, there's no options for selecting like a four by four or the golden ratio or anything like that. It's just this kind of simple three by three, uh, which is fine, no problem. Uh, Keep scrolling down, there's more stuff. Uh, shutter sounds, vibration feedback, grid lines, 
auto HDR. There's like so many functions in there. Uh, but also one of the nice things that you can do is play around with all of the new uh, sort of features on here. What's uh, one of the new things is director's view. And inside of director's view, you basically get previews of everything that's going on, all of the lenses. So we've got our kind of standard look here, our selfie camera right here. We've got, we can choose between uh, each different uh, lens and we can see a preview of what those shots are going to look like. So a nice little touch there. Also, inside more, you have a uh, pro video. You can change aperture, white balance, all that stuff. Portrait video, a pro photo mode, hyperlapse, and all of this is customizable as well. If you hit the little plus button right here, you can drag and drop which features you want uh, to be quickly accessible down here. Single take, a uh, nice little feature. I just have portrait, photo, and video. I don't necessarily need a whole bunch else. And you know, for the testing and my review, I'll be using all of that for the, for the most part. Don't necessarily need it, um, but having that stuff there is, is very nice. Um, for anyone who may be curious, Shooting on this phone is really fast. The autofocus is really good. And the telephoto lenses are helpful for a few things. So just wanted to get that out there. Um, these buttons up here, you've got a timer. Um, you've got your uh, ratios, your 3.5 at 108 megapixels, a three by four, I believe it's binned at 12 megapixels. Um, you also have, uh, and when you're in the regular not, 108 megapixels you can access uh, access different things like motion photo as well as these filters and then you can choose from a whole bunch and you can determine the intensity of each filter as well so that's the camera i mean i could probably spend all day just talking about the camera but i don't want to keep you guys forever uh, that is uh, like a thousand plus tips and tricks for the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Our full review is coming. If you haven't already watched it, check out our unboxing. Check out our first 10 things to do. We've got more coverage coming. In the meantime, hope everyone is staying well, staying healthy, and we will catch you the next time. Peace.